When you think of a tube mic, your mind probably conjures up images of some of the legendary tube mics from the 1950s and 60s, like the Neumann U47, U67, or the Telefunken 251. But did microphone technology really peak over 60 years ago? Or what if you're like me and don't have 25 to $30,000 to spend on a mic? Well, today we're taking a look at a mic that promises to combine classic sound with modern technology, all at a price point that won't require taking out a second mortgage on your house to afford, the Vanguard V13. And be sure to stick around, because later in the video we'll be shooting the V13 out against some of those classic tube mics to see if it really can hang with these vintage titans. The first word that came to mind when I heard this mic was balanced. It definitely has some weight and character and thickness that reminded me a lot of the classic tube mics I used to use all the time while working out of a commercial studio before building my own place. But the V13 also seemed to have a more detailed top end. Not so much bright, because it's definitely not a bright mic, but just a little more of a modern sounding top end, allowing tracks recorded with it to just sit beautifully into the mix without a ton of EQ. Feature-wise, it's got a low cut filter and a 10 decibel pad here on the back, both nice to have. And then being a tube mic, ugh, it has a power supply here, which is where you can select the polar pattern. You've got nine options going from figure eight to cardioid and omni and everything in between. And of course, a shock mount. And I actually really like the shock mount. It's all metal and it's like chunky, not at all flimsy or cheap feeling. And I really like the shape of it too. With this cutout in the front, if you can see that, uh, like with some shock mounts, one second. So yeah, like with this one uh, from the Sony C80, it's a little cheap and plastic feeling, which does that matter? I don't know, that's up to you. I'm just letting you know. But because of the shape of it, you can't get it any closer than like two inches from something. So like if I wanted to throw this up next to a 57 right on a guitar cab, I couldn't do it. But with the Vanguard, you can get it probably less than half an inch or so from something. Not necessarily something that comes up all the time, but definitely nice to have. And much like with the shock mount, the mic itself feels really solid and well built. Plus bonus points for picking a color besides black or gray. I don't know how well the color is showing up on camera, but it's like this nice Merlot kind of color. Again, does it really matter? Probably not, but I just appreciate that they're doing something a little different. But anyway, enough talking. Let's actually hear this thing. Here's a clip of the V13 in use on singer-songwriter Julia Alsaroff. Link to her music in the description. I sat you down on the couch You pulled me in and kissed my mouth I couldn't bear then to tell you The timing just didn't work out I think that sounds fantastic. And it made my job stupid easy. Like on the guitar track, all I did was cut like two decibels at 200 hertz and just barely touch it with an LA-3A style compressor. Same thing with the vocal. I made two tiny cuts at like 350 and 750, both less than two decibels, and then just some light compression and a touch of de -essing. When you start with the right mic, it just makes life easy. So at this point, we know it sounds good, but I really wanted to find out just how good. To find out, I booked some time at the clubhouse in lovely Rhinebeck, New York, to shoot the V13 out against a vintage U47, U67, and 251. Let's take a listen. Later that night in our bed I opened up the message thread Later that night in our bed I opened up the message If you played me those clips blind and told me that one of those mics cost less than a tenth as much as the other three, I genuinely don't think I'd be able to tell you which one was the cheap one. In fact, when the singer and I listened back in the studio, we both chose the Vanguard for her voice. It kind of felt like a nice Goldilocks option, combining what I liked about each mic while still having a character all its own. 
It had some of the richness of the Neumanns with a tiny bit of that mid-range push. And then it had some of that brightness and airiness of the 251, but just dialed back a little bit. We were both feeling like the Neumanns were a little nasally or congested sounding. And the 251 was really nice, but maybe a little bit too bright and zingy on top for this track, especially when Julia digs in a little. Plus on this particular day, at least the 251 was pretty noisy, which is never a good time on vocals. Let's listen again in solo this time. And we'll just do the one line so you can really focus on the differences. Later that night in our bed 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 now obviously there's never one best mic. I'm sure some of you watching will have preferred each of the four mics. And on a different voice, I might have preferred a different mic as well. But this definitely showed me that the Vanguard is a serious mic and isn't in any way a compromise. I was a little worried going into this test that I would absolutely love one of the vintage mics and would have to consider selling my car in order to afford one for myself. But I lucked out and my wallet is safe for another day. But anyway, if you wanna learn more about the Vanguard V13, I'll put a link to the website in the description down below. And if you want to check out more mic reviews and shootouts, check out this playlist. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.